over time, our daughter did end up seeking help. How long? Um, well, uh, there was a string of things that happened, and then finally, you know, they talk about hitting rock bottom. I'm not so sure if it was exactly rock bottom, but for her, I think it was the time where she kind of like decided, you know what, this isn't the this life isn't I want. Okay. And, um, and so, you know, then we had to, of course, go through the sobriety aspect of it, which is, a, you know, a whole other dynamic. So in, in, in all of that, you know, that definitely interfered in, in the, her two siblings. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my, my other daughter who you've met, you know, um, she went through a lot of, uh, vulnerability too, because she, well, she, she was hiding that from everybody. Mm -hmm. So she was in a lot of pain and it wasn't until she was able to kind of express her feelings, you know, in a real way that, that relationship started to heal yeah. because she was actually uh, here a few weeks back yeah. and talked about how the impact of the interaction with her sister yeah. and what happened and um, how she was pushed into depression and she was hiding it. And we talked about this mask that we all wear. And the, while we are talking and as I was preparing for this conversation, I was thinking about, you know, people say you don't judge the book with the cover, with its cover. People who look at anybody, you, me, anybody, mm -hmm. they feel or they might think that, oh, they have it all right. together, their life is good, their right. home is this, you know, but they don't really know what happens no. b behind the closed doors. Right. You know, so that is when we talk about don't judge. Because you don't know what that person is going Right, and through. I think there's a portion of that where you're not really safe in society. Even though there is obviously drug addiction, there's alcoholism, there's challenges with every dynamic of family. You know, people are not willing necessarily and feel safe in society to share those types of dramatic mm -hmm. things that are happening in their life. So, of course, they put on this facade where you know uh, we're working we're trying to have success over here we're trying to develop whatever it is our careers are mm -hmm. and all of this is playing out while this other thing in our family in our life and I experienced I was so angry because I experienced it twice I had to watch my mother mm. and I had to watch my brother and now I had a child. So that's three times. Oh now. my God, that's right, it's three times. And I was exhausted. And I was like, okay, what do I need to do for myself? How am I going to empower myself to not only get through the depression, to get through the, um, you know, uh, blaming myself, um, perhaps not even, even being able to function at my highest level because of all of the things that were yeah. going on. And so therefore I wasn't actually achieving the goals that I wanted to achieve personally. And then you become the sacrificial lamb. You, you know, you're entitled, you're, this is, we all have this one life. And yes, we have our children, we have our mm -hmm. husbands, we have our relationships, we have our work. But at the end of the day, if you allow the, to become the sacrificial lamb because of what's going on mm -hmm. and you allow that to basically take away who you are yeah. you lose your identity exactly. you become incredibly depressed and you're not sure how to kind of get out of it yeah. I call it a dark hole it's very you know, dark just, it's and if you allow it it just sucks you so deep that you don't know how to climb back and you know it seems that you were able to seek help or to understand that you deserve to be out of this hole. I have to tell you that part of the salvation of this whole experience that I had was finding personal development, was finding gratitude, mm -hmm. was finding, you know, the things in my life that were so amazing and wonderful. I mean, you know, at the darkest times in your life, uh, and that dark hole and that depression, you can stay there. You can choose to stay there. You, even if you don't have the means to go and maybe get therapy or whatever, there are so many things uh, there that you can grab. Especially now. Especially now. And so I did. I found personal development. I found w uh, reading was incredibly mm -hmm. powerful. And I know 
that some people uh, have difficulty necessarily reading the book, but you know you can put it in your ears yeah, now and you so can listen all the right time. Now. And and actually, the personal development aspect that I was challenged with because initially it's not easy either because mm -hmm. you have to hear things you're not necessarily exactly. willing to hear. So personal development, you know, growth in myself, being willing to say, hey, you may not be looking at this the correct way. Maybe you need a little growth. Maybe you need to be talking a different uh -huh. way. Maybe you need to be saying things in a different way. Maybe you're being too stubborn on how you're thinking. Hey, maybe you need to open up. So I want to clarify that. Uh, that is different than criticizing yourself and feeling guilty and right. putting yourself down and right. beating yourself up. That is becoming the observer, which I again talk about, becoming the observer and say, um, let's look to see how we can improve the situation. Right. How, what is it that I can do better? Right. You know, it's not that you're doing things wrong, but how can you do them better to right. improve the situation? And it's interesting, many years ago, my mother used to say things to me like, you know, she was a really smart woman. She had a disease, but she was very smart. And I didn't recognize all of that until, of course, after she was gone, that I had my own kids in my own life and, and really realized the struggles of raising a family and all of those things. Uh, but she used to say to me, you know, you need to look in the mirror sometimes mm -hmm. and you need to really look in the mirror at who you are and what you are. And so when I decided to really look in the mirror, I decided to seek out personal development and I decided to make a decision to work on, at personal development every day and it changed me inside to outside I mean mm -hmm. it, it changed me as a person and it, uh, it I relied heavily on the things that I learned uh, that I had to look at in my own self and say okay you can be mad at the world that your daughter had to struggle through those times but look at what's happened now mm -hmm. she's vibrant she's brilliant she's beautiful she has tremendous opportunity in her life and she got through it yeah. she came out of it yeah. you know my other daughter is thriving and oh, doing well amazing. my my son who nobody really knows but he's doing very well as and, you know I'm all of the relationships are very different and they're very dynamic and they struggle up and down and we go through what we go through as a family but at the end of the day what I have to say about it all the vulnerability the growth the development the depression which which comes and goes all the time and just being able to wake up in the morning and sometimes I even the other day I woke up and, and I said to my husband I said you know sometimes I wake up and I really don't know where the direction is that I'm going you know I'm not exactly sure is, is this exactly right? So I leave myself the ability and permission to just, you know, allow myself that, that, uh, um, the decision to make a decision, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To just make a decision and decide what yeah. I want to do that day and, and be happy and excited about the day and, and utilize the tools that I work so hard to achieve. Yes. Yeah. So, so, I'm going to take you back a little bit to the time of all of that was happening because, you know, now we kind of talked about it, we jumped out of it, in that dealing with everything that was happening, how are you feeling? Like, well, were you taking care of you? No. Did, okay. No. Okay. No, no, no. I because you talk about self-development, it all came That's after. What, right. Right? Okay. I, I, so I, what I, happened during? You know, I did not have clarity. I had no clarity. I was in uh, fight or flight. Actually, when this happened to my daughter, um, I physically got ill. I, I actually, uh, and I didn't understand at the time that I got ill, um, why I was getting ill because it was a delayed reaction. She had already gotten sober. Mm -hmm. And so when I when this happened to her, I kind of went into fight or flight. I didn't really know exactly what to do. Uh, I was uh, scared. I was I I had to at one point she she didn't die, but I kind of had to mourn her death because at any time I thought the phone was going to ring mm -hmm. and I was going to get this terrible phone call. Um and I was a wreck basically. Uh, but it didn't happen until two years later that I had started having severe, severe panic attacks mm. to the point where I w was put in the hospital. And I would say maybe two people in my life knew that, my husband and one of my dearest friends. 
and it wasn't something that I broadcast. I can broadcast it now because...